Hello, LifeSite friends. Jim Hale with you here, right in front of the United States Capitol on the day after the, uh, the Supreme Court hearings and uh, all of our live coverage we had out here yesterday. And one of the most amazing things is I, I got a call just a couple of days before the, uh, the, the hearings from our dear friend, Jason Jones. Y you all know who this, this, this man is. And uh, Jason said, Jim, I'm gonna be in Washington. And guess what? I have a very special person that I'm bringing down with me. So, so the, the timing of this is remarkable. Many of you know that Jason is, is an American hero, American pro-life hero, but, but we collaborated with Jason uh, a, a month ago to help bring, we raised over $300,000 to help bring Afghan, uh, suffering Afghan Christians, Afghans who had helped the United States military to get out of Afghanistan. Many of them have come here. We have a very special young man with us here today, but Jason Jones, it's so good to be it's with you to, here in the nation's capital, brother. It's good to be here with you. It's a little cold for a guy from Hawaii, but it's good to be here with you and, and to introduce Mustafa. You know, you called me a hero. I'm not here. LifeSite News and your supporters, our supporters, are the real heroes because uh, when my organization, we started getting inundated with requests for help in early August from Christians in Afghanistan, and we were working with very large organizations to get pe to evacuate people yeah. to safety, and when those organizations kind of pulled up and left and ran into a brick wall, LifeSite News showed up with LifeFunder, yeah, yeah. and we didn't have this in our budget. We had no way of um, on our own to pay the very expensive costs to evacuate people. And thanks to LifeSite News, we've been able to evacuate, resettle folks, and also right now we're providing food and coal for people in safe houses yeah. in Afghanistan. And that's all thanks to you and your heroes yeah. and, and the heroes there. And, and uh, Jason, tell us about this young man standing next so to you. Mustafa, through a friend of mine, um, who many of you may know, Juliana Tamarazi, she's an Assyrian, um, Iranian human rights activist. She was in touch with Mustafa. She said, I have this young man. He's working to rescue his Christian community back home in Afghanistan. Can you work with them? And this, he left his job in July, seeing what was coming down for the Christians in Afghanistan. And together we've been able to work to evacuate uh, young women from Afghanistan to safety. And now we're working to resettle him. Right. He's a true hero. Mustafa, um, you are a convert to Christianity. Can you tell us what it's like to be a Christian today in Afghanistan? Uh, hi, thanks. Um, uh, Afghanistan right now is the most dangerous place in the world for uh, Christians, and uh, that is because uh, all of Afghan Christians are converts, and the penalty for that in Afghanistan is death. Uh, so uh, it is just... Uh, the only way that we can help them is to save them and evacuate them. Other than that, even their own family members would betray them or their friends would betray them to uh, the Taliban to uh, help themselves. So it is, um, it's a Mustafa, very- Mustafa, how, how dire is the situation right now for those who need to be rescued in Afghanistan? How, how, how bad is it? Uh, it is absolutely horrible. Uh, last week, uh, I lost a family of six that went back to their homes. They left the safe house to um, go and take care of, to see if they could take care of their own finances and take care of their property and house. Uh, but they were betrayed by family members before that, and uh, unfortunately now they're all dead. Um, well, Mustafa, what, what what happened? So how did the, the so so they were betrayed by a family member, and then the Taliban just executed them. Yes. And this is a Christian family. Yes. Oh, Mustafa, how, how hard is this for you to be here in America now, and 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 to know how much your people are suffering in the name of Christ? Uh, it's heartbreaking. Um, I. Uh, I can't sleep. I keep thinking about them. I keep thinking about their suffering. Um, and uh, uh, since July, I've been trying to reach out to UN agencies, uh, government, U.S. government agencies, to see if we could do something for them. Uh, as I belie uh, believe that uh, 
after 20 years of war, the Afghan Christian community is the only fruits of that operation. Other than that, Taliban were there, Taliban are there now. Uh, the only thing that's changed is that, that some lives were saved through Christ and through missionary uh, missionaries that went there. And now I think we owe it to them to uh, help them and get them out or provide uh, safety and um, at least safety in the winter and yeah. maybe uh, hopefully evacuate them thereafter. Mustafa, th thank you so much for, for, for sharing that painful story with us. This is just heartbreaking. And Jason, it's this is justified anger too because these people are getting no help from the United States government. No, I have to tell you, yeah, in early August when we started getting contacted, I didn't sleep for weeks. I mean, that's not an exaggeration. And Mustafa went weeks without sleeping. And after two or three weeks of sitting in the same place in my office on my couch in front of a laptop, I asked myself, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And what's going on? This is, and I, and I was angry. I'm a veteran, you know, and, I, and I, our government went to Afghanistan and we threw promises around like Mardi Gras beads. Yeah. You and I didn't go throwing promises around. Yeah. And they, they, they made promises. They broke the promises. And they didn't even look over their shoulder to say goodbye. And um, we have an obligation. And I was telling Mustafa about yesterday being here for the Dobbs case. And I, I, all of this started for me when I was a 17-year-old private at Fort Benning, Georgia. And I got a phone call from my high school girlfriend that her father beat her up and forced her to have a third trimester abortion. Yeah. And I felt lonely and powerless. And that's when I decided I wanted to spend the rest of my life standing with others yeah. who felt lonely and powerless. And I was trying to explain to Mustafa that Roe versus Wade our foreign policy is a fruit of Roe versus Wade. Right. Only a country that abandoned its own child in the womb could abandon its friends in Afghanistan. Only Christians that turned its back on the child in the womb could turn its back on, their, uh, on Christians in Afghanistan. And that's why I don't think it's a mistake. It's not, it's, you know, people often think, what do you do, Jason? You're fighting abortion, you're working in Sudan or in, Ar in Iraq or in Afghanistan. What's the connection? I, I don't understand how they don't see the connection. I want to stand with those who no one else wants to stand with. And so I don't think it's a mistake that it was LifeSite News through your Life Funder program that gave us 90% of our resources that we were able to share with. What we, we've been able to do thanks to LifeSite News is um, we are giving them food and fuel and cell phones that, that are, that's very important to be able to communicate yeah. with them in their safe houses. We're able to pay for the safe houses in Afghanistan. We've been able to pay to, to take people from, Pakistan, uh, from Afghanistan to neighboring countries that are safer, not safe, but safer. And then now we're able to work and process visas and get them to, to resettle them in other countries around the world. Um, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And um, sometimes it feels intractable. We've run into brick walls, but we don't quit. We think, we work. Um, and uh, we have a lot of work to do this, this, you know, through this winter, as, as probably your audience knows, and maybe Mustafa can share with you, um, the world community has recognized that there's gonna be an unprecedented famine in Afghanistan. But we are in direct con con contact with these Christian communities. And that's why, you know, I'm glad that we can be here again, because we really need people's support. We, we, we have to get them coal, we have to get them wood. And this is very important because it gets very cold in Afghanistan. We need to get them food. But we're also working. There are people every day. We're getting, there are people that if we don't get them out of the country in the next week or two, they'll, they'll be dead. So those are those emergency overland folks we have to get to neighboring countries. And then once we get them to neighboring countries, they don't want them there forever. We have to work at getting them visas. And then we have to work at getting them resettled somewhere, a new permanent home. And... Um, you know, I think the, the Christian vocation is solidarity with yeah, the vulnerable. Yeah. That is our vocation. Yeah. Amen. Mustafa, um, can you tell us right now, so, so the, the Christians that you're in contact with, what are their needs right now? What do they need? Uh, urgently, they need uh, a safe place, uh, and they need shelter, yeah. food, and uh, heat. That is their immediate need. Um, How do you find these safe houses for them? Uh, we work logistically and uh, as well as uh, with uh, other uh, networks that uh, I have been, uh, I'm in contact with yeah. there. Uh, because just like the idea of the safe house is to have a plan in place that if 
the Taliban comes knocking, then we should be able to evacuate them and they don't get uh, right. into the wrong hands, as well as um, provide them with uh, their necessities so that they don't, so they wouldn't have to go out uh, outside those of them that their faces are known and they are wanted by the government, by the Taliban government. Right. So, Mustafa, what you're describing are Christians being hunted down and executed. Th this is, this is living in New Testament times, in the, the first and second and third century of Christianity. Uh, yes, yes. Um, it is like that. Uh, it's, uh, and they are betrayed by um, members of their community. And uh, uh, we had to relocate uh, to, uh, around seven churches from three provinces so just to provide them uh, a place where they wouldn't be, th where their uh, neighbors and um, wouldn't know who they are and we don't even let them uh, stay in touch with other members of their community who are not uh, Christian for uh, security reasons yes, yes. Uh, so that uh, they wouldn't endanger the lives of others and as well as themselves. And, and, and folks, uh, I tell you what, you're not going to hear this story on the mainstream media. This is where you're going to hear LifeSite News. <laughs> We've just heard this young man describing this this horror. This is this is unthinkable. This is unconscionable. What is happening right now? Our Christian brothers and sisters are being persecuted. Our Christian brothers and sisters are being executed right now as we speak. Jason we got to get this life under fired up we again, get folks. Fired up. Yeah. You know, I want, I want to share with you one story. We, uh, I was at my son's swim meet, right. and Mustafa forwarded me uh, a thank you letter from some of the girls that we, we brought out of yes, Afghanistan yeah. to safety. I'm at my son's swim meet. I start crying. What the girls said was, we gave up hope that we would, we knew we were going to be killed. And um, we knew we were going to be killed, but we just were praying that our chastity and our honor would be preserved. They gave up hope right. that they, they, they thought they were gonna lose their life. That was a given. They weren't even asking God to protect, preserve their life. They were just asking God to preserve their chastity and their honor. Because right, rape is a part of this, mass rape. Uh, yeah. Yes, they were, uh, they had looked at what uh, ISIS had done in, uh, uh, to Yazidis and to Assyrian uh, Christians and other Christian uh, communities in uh, Syria and Iraq. And they um, were scared the same thing would happen and uh, to them, in Afghanistan. Uh, so it was, uh, in the beginning, it was a very, it was very hard to convince people not to commit suicide, especially oh. the young girls. Well, uh, so you are the body of Christ, uh, friends, li life site friends. It, it, you know, it's, it's not that often that we have an opportunity to have a direct impact where we can actually go in and help save other Christians. So, Jason, I want to tell you, I'm honored to be standing here with Mustafa right now, and you, and your your brother who is off camera right now. We that have we we, here we that are we, off camera we that have been really important to the work we do, but by the nature of what they do, we, we can't bring them on camera. Right. And um, LifeSite News and LifeFunder made all the difference. When I get these emails from people and say, like these young women called us their angels, that you came, you know, you descended and saved their lives. It was Life Under. Those of you who donated to Life Under, and I know that we have not been, I have not been as communicative as I have, I probably should have been, because there's, we've been afraid to tell too much. Right. Um, now we're in a position where we think we can tell a little bit more. And also, it's just you're emotionally and physically exhausted yeah, at the yeah. end of the day. I'm like, I need, I know I need to make a Life Under video. I can't even, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm about to collapse. And, um, but thank you. And I would like to ask everyone who has donated if they can match their gift. Um, if, if we could raise another $350,000 from Life Funder, the communities, Mustafa's communities, all of them will have food and heat for the winter. Um, we'll be able to pay for the safe houses in Afghanistan and in Pakistan all through the winter. And this is our real goal. We have, we need to raise a lot more because resettlement is very expensive, getting them visas and getting them passports yeah. and getting them to other countries. But right now, and, and you'll see this in the news in the coming weeks because they're not going to be able to hide it, this famine is going to be something like the world has never seen. And you have to remember, and I, and I, and I probably you don't want me to get into politics, Joe Biden said no regrets. That seemed to me a very callous and cold response. He could have said, you know, we have lots of regrets. What? How would he have lost any dignity by saying that? It would have been... 
Of course, there's regrets. We're about to see a country starve to death. And we cannot, and, and I'll be honest, when we rescue somebody, we just had someone, an American citizen, it took us nine weeks to get home. They just landed. You would think you get a little joy, but in the end, you just, you look at the thousands of yeah, people that we still are trying to get to safety. It's just overwhelming. And so thanks to you, and thanks to those of you who have donated to us, we've been able to help a lot of people so far, but we really want to get them through this cold and brutal winter. We're not going to be able to save the whole country. Yeah. But what we want to do is, like Mother Teresa said, we want to tend to our bucket of human suffering. So um, we've dipped our bucket into the, the sea of suffering, and we're bringing that bucket home, but we need your help right. to tend to it. Jason Jones, I can't thank you enough for being here. You know, uh, Jason, we just spoke on Monday. I said, hey, are, are you going to be in D.C. for the Mississippi hearings? He said, yeah. And he said, why don't I send Mustafa down on the train? So you, you got Mustafa, you put him on the train, you brought him down here. Yeah. And Mustafa, brother, you're my brother in Christ. God bless you. I pray for all God's blessings on you. Please pray for this young man and all the people that he's trying to help. And please pray for this effort. And as Jason said, we ask you, we appeal to you to match your gift. If you if you donated before, if you're just seeing this for the first time, we, we are, we're going to put the address up on the screen for this Life Funder. We're going to get our Life Funder coordinator, Tim Jackson, fired up on this. And, and in this season of Advent, in this season of giving, please prayerfully consider helping our brothers and sisters who are suffering, who are in fear of their lives right now. LifeSite friends, we, we love you so much. We thank you for all you've done. Jason Jones, thank you for being Thanks down for here that. today again, brother. Thank you very much. And Masafa, thank you so much. Thank you. And I just wanted to add that the uh, uh, part of the reason that we uh, need, that they need help is because they have, uh, when they were leaving uh, their houses, uh, they had to leave their livelihood behind and uh, they cannot access their bank accounts they cannot access uh, anything from their past uh, they just rely on help from other Christian communities around the world and uh, um, which um, uh, as well as here on the from Jason Jones yes. uh, so their whole lives depends on our help there you go they depend on our help. Um, uh, it, it's an honor to be able to 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 be a voice to 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 give you a platform so we can hear your voice, Mustafa and Jason. Um, LifeSite friends, thank you so much for 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 being with us today. We pray for all God's blessings on you, Advent blessings on you and your your families throughout this Christmas season. Thank you for all the help you've given us before, and uh, we'll see you next time reporting from the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C., Jim Hale, LifeSite News.